So Sonoff sent me this device. This is a human presence sensor, and we will connect this to Home Assistant using Zigbee to MQTT and Zigbee Home Automation. We will create a simple automation to see how this device works and detects a person in the room. So with this, let's get started. Now, before we connect this to Home Assistant, let's look at what this device is. Now, this is a human presence sensor. That is, it detects the presence of a person in the room using microwaves. Now, what is the difference between this and the PIR sensors that detect the person in the room? Now, in case of the PIR sensors, it mainly makes use of infrared waves to detect the motion of a person. That means it's good for detecting motion of a person rather than presence of a person. In case of this device, it makes use of this microwave of 5.8 gigahertz to detect if the person itself is present at that location even when the person is not moving around now let's take for example you want to create like an automation wherein you want to turn on the light when you sit next to the table so you can still do this using the motion sensor right but what will happen is that after some time since you are not moving it will tell that the person is not present and it will turn off the light itself but in case of this sensor it will tell you that the person is present next to the table itself. Now, this is not going to tell you that where the person is, but it will detect that the person is present and you don't have to move around for this. Now, this device has three occupancy sensitivity, that is low, medium and high. In case of the low mode, it can detect up to 2.5 meters. In case of the medium, 3.5 and then high, which is up to 4 meters. Now, this device itself is powered by a USB-C cable as well as this communicates using a Zigbee protocol. Now, in terms of dimensions, this product is like around 2 to 2.5 inch and in terms of breadth, it is around 1.5 inch. Now, this is pretty good like a small device that you can have to detect the presence of a person without the person moving around. Now, let's see how we can connect this to Home Assistant using Zigbee to Home Automation as well as Zigbee to MQTT. So, let's start with Zigbee Home Automation. For this, let's go to Settings and then we are going to go to Devices and Services. And here, what we are going to do, we are going to go to Zigbee Home Automation. Now here inside devices, I'm going to click on add device. And now what we have to do is we have to put this device into pairing mode. So for this, what you have to do is there's this button on top here. You have to press and hold this button until this goes into this blinking red state. So if you see now, it starts blinking like this. And this means that the device has gone into pairing mode. So now this will be detected by Zigbee Home Automation. And if you see right now, the device is now detected. So I'm not going to change the name of this device. Let it be as is and let's go and visit the device now. So let me see here. So I have this right now, the device here itself. And let's look at some of this info. Now here, the device type is a router. That means this can be used to extend your Zigbee network further. That means it can be used to route connections to other end devices further. Why? Because this one is powered by a USB-C. Now the two sensors that I see here is the motion sensor and the occupancy sensor. So right now the sensor is next to me itself. So it's detecting me right now, but it's showing that the motion is clear. Now, when I was doing a little bit of testing around this, I noticed that only once the occupancy is detected, that's the time it shows that the motion is also there. So this only works if there's occupancy involved. So I would say we can just depend on this sensor for the Zigbee Home Automation. Now, in case of the Zigbee Home Automation, this is the only information that is available. But in case of Zigbee to MQTT, there are quite many more information that is available such that you can configure this device. So let's look at how we can do this using Zigbee to MQTT. So here I have Zigbee to MQTT. I'm going to now permit devices to join Zigbee to MQTT. So let me now put the device into pairing mode again. So I'm going to take out this device and I'm going to press and hold this until it goes into this red blinking state. So now it is gone into the pairing mode. And if you see, it will start interviewing the device. So it has already started interviewing the device itself and it has now connected the device to Zigbee to MQTT. Let's actually look inside what this device has. now. So if you see here, it is first of all supported by Zigbee to MQTT and the manufacturer is soon of itself. Now let's look at what it exposes. So let's look at the various options that we can see here. So first of all, we have this occupancy state that is it's going to tell if the person is detected or not. Right now, the sensor is next to me. That's why it's saying it's occupied. That is, it has detected me right now. 
Now let's look at the next thing that is this occupancy timeout. Now in the latest release, we got this timeout to a minimum of 15 seconds. Previously, it was like 60 seconds to detect if the person is there or not. So if for 15 seconds, the person is not there, it will set this occupancy to clear. Now, along with this, we have this occupancy sensitivity, which is set to low, medium and high. Let me right now set it to low. And this makes sure that it will detect a person up to 2.5 meters. The medium goes up to 3.5 and the high is up to 4 meters itself. Along with this, we have this illumination state. Now this tells you if the room is bright or dim and this only works if there's some occupancy being detected here. So this state actually can be used to determine when the person is present. It will tell you if the room is bright or dimly lit itself. And then finally, we have this link quality, which actually just tells you the signal strength itself. Now, this is what we can see inside Zigbee to MQTT, right? Let's go into Home Assistant and see what this thing does. So let me go back to now settings and I'm going to go to devices and I'm going to go now to MQTT. Now in MQTT here, I see four devices wherein one of my device is right now the occupancy sensor. Now, here we also have the Zigbee thermostat radiator valve. If you want to have a look at it, there's a video that I've linked here wherein I've shown you how to link this device as well as maintain the room temperature by using this device. Right now, let's look at the Zigbee occupancy sensor itself. Now, here we see all the options that we saw in the Zigbee to MQTT. First of all, the occupancy sensitivity level that is low, medium and high. Then we have the illumination level and then we have the motion. This motion is actually the occupancy part here. So it is right now in case of home assistant, it is showing it as detected. But in case of Zigbee to MQTT, it is occupied. So this is what it looks like. Here also, you can also see the occupancy timeout here that is right now set to 15 seconds. So this is what we have right now. Now I have some automations that I've created here. Let's go through some of these automations. So what I've done here is in case of this device itself, we have some of these triggers when it detected uh, a person, when it stopped detecting a person and quite some many triggers are present here. Now, what I've done here is that when it detects some person, it will turn on one of these plugs here. Now, this is a simple automation that I've done. That is once it detects a person, it will turn on this plug. Similarly, I have this opposite automation wherein it is unoccupied, wherein it stops detecting something, it will turn off the matter plug here. So these are the two automations right now that I have right now. So using this mechanism, you can connect this device using Zigbee to MQTT. One of the major advantages that I saw using Zigbee to MQTT is that you get a lot of configuration options out there. Now, also the other option that I see is that you can update the device using Zigbee to MQTT. That is the most important thing for me that my devices are always up to date and you can always update this using this OTA menu option here right now. Now I have been using this device for quite some time and I have seen that the detection range of this sensor is like 180 degrees. It's not like the Akara FP2 sensors wherein it's narrowed down to 90 degrees, but this didn't detect up to 180 degrees. That is, if the sensor is like this and if the person comes in parallel with this sensor, this sensor can detect that person itself. Now let's talk in terms of price. This one cost nearly around 14 to $15. If you compare it with any PIR sensors that you can get, which is around $10, this is a really good alternative for that. Why? Because this can actually detect the person's presence in the room and not wait on any kind of motion for it to detect the person. Useful automations are like the one that I just created before wherein if it detects something, turn on the light. If it does not detect the person, then turn it off like that way. So something like an automation, like you have this desk lamp that you want to turn on as soon as you sit next to the desk itself. So such kind of automations can be done and it is much more reliable than using a PIR sensor, which nearly costs the same price. Now, one more thing that I like about this is this magnetic stand. I can attach this magnetic stand to any metal surface and also attach the sensor to this this way. And this allows me to keep the sensor in any rotation that I want. Now, there is a small drawback also to this is that when this cable is attached to this and this can cause the device or the sensor to move around a bit. To get around this problem, Sonoff has provided some clips with this such that you can attach this cable to the wall and this does not move the sensor itself. 
Now I keep on making videos around how you can make things smart at home. So if you like this video, make sure to hit that like button as well as hit that subscribe button. And if you want to support this channel, there are links into the description below wherein you can buy me a coffee or you can support me via Patreon. Till then, take care and I will see you in my next one.